All right. Looks like we are live. Welcome to a Hangout edition of the Four Fight Factor Live, episode number 21. We are joined by Beltor Lightweight contender David Caveman Rickles. And here he is now, dancing around. What's up? <laughs> What's going on? I'm happy to be on. All right. Yeah, we're always happy to have you back. You're always a good time. You're always a fun guy to have. You're always an interesting guy to talk to. Um, we don't got a fight coming up soon, you know. Been a little while since the fight, so we can just talk about whatever you want to talk about this time. Man, let's just leave it open. Let's just go places where no one else wants to go. All right, let's let's talk about. Um, you don't need roads on this. All right, what, what are you, what are your views on Syria? The Syria. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally disagree with what's going on there. Let's dial it back just a little bit then. All right, we went a yeah, little. Yeah. We went a little too far and deep there. All right, that's all right. That's all right. That's a mulligan. Like right. a proper caveman, my world is literally just like what's around me. So you can, <laughs> my world views are probably a little distorted. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. Well, let's start MMA stuff just because. You know, we're an MMA site, and I'm sure so, at least someone wants to hear about that. Um, views on Rampage Jackson and his contract dispute. Man, uh, I don't know. I thought you were I about really to say know the full I don't know the full <laughs> details of it or anything like that, so it's hard for me to really weigh in. But, uh, man, Bell Bellator, um, you know, it sucks to have lost Rampage. I like to. I want to see what the the UFC is gonna do with him though. With Rampage now, I think he's fighting a uh, Fabio Maldonado. That's who they got him lined up with. Good fight for him. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's all about matchups. Like they literally just signed Krokop so that Bellator wouldn't have him. <laughs> well, they're doing um. Crow Cop Rampage, I'm sure that's Yeah, they're, they're slated. I just read this morning that they're going to do Crow Cop Gonzaga 2 in Poland. I didn't read the full report on that. I just saw the headline when I was going through my email. So, like, that makes a lot of sense if you're starting to break out into that part of Europe to bring him back because he's a draw. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, do you think he can beat Gonzaga? How old's Gonzaga now? I think he's still in his like mid to late thirties, honestly. Yeah. Um, he's just, you know, one of those guys who's been doing it a long time. I don't want to see Krokop die in the ring. <laughs> he's a legend. <laughs> well, I think he should be finding other legends that are just as old. Yeah. Well, I mean, Gonzaga's been around a while, you know. I mean, we just that's kind of what you know derailed his title shot years and years ago. Uh, one thing they will do, though, and it, they did this with Crow Cop before, is they'll cut a guy because it's not that he's not a draw. It's not that he can't still compete at the level. It's that they're paying him too much for what he brings in. So when they first signed Crow Cop after Pride, he was getting, you know, um, six-figure to show money. And then he gets knocked out by Gonzaga, and all of a sudden... They were like, you're too expensive. So he went and fought somewhere else, you know, back in Japan for a couple fights. They bring him back, paying him less than half of that. But, hey, he, you know, he lost three fights. They let him go. He went and racked up a 3 and one record. And then we can bring you back for a lot less money. Same thing happened with Arlovsky. When he went to go fight for Affliction and all those guys, they were giving him million-dollar purses. And he was pretty close to another title shot before he left the UFC the first time. But, hey, they bring him back around again. It's not like, oh, they brought back Arlovsky. It's like, no, Arlovsky's only costing us, like, you know, thirty grand. So who cares? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I always forget to look at it from that side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Who's he supposed to fight? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Fabio Maldonado. But I just want to make. I want to be. I want to be perfectly sure. Oh God, he's got such a it's long like, history. I mean, I don't know. I just see some of these matchups. Not that like Dan Henderson can't compete. It is. But Dan Henderson Crow Cop would be a badass fight to watch. Oh, I mean, Crow Cop's a small heavyweight, but ooh, 
that I I almost don't want to see I almost don't want to see that fight because no matter what, one of them is going to just get brutally knocked out, and you're going to be like, That's "Why I want to watch it?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like I think Dan Henderson's a little, you know, like he's he's aged a little better in the fight game than Krokop, and but then he's a little smaller than Krokop, so you know I think it kind of, you know, it could work out. <laughs> Um, so I was talking to, uh, Matt Van Buren, uh, he was a finalist on the last season, or the season, the last male season of Tough, you know, and he was a Bellator guy, too. I know who he is. He's like, oh, I know that motherfucker. You got that I look met on him. Your, you got that look on your face, like, fuck that guy. No, 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 he was <laughs> yeah. nice when I met him, man, he was a super nice guy. Yeah, no, he is, uh, he's from, you know, he hails from Hampton Roads, where I spent a lot of time of my life, and, uh, you know, he was just saying, like, the one thing that, you know, beef had with Bellator was really, it was like, he didn't get a fight enough, you know, um, you know, and now you're part of the organization with the format change, you know, and the idea was, okay, we, we slim down the roster, and we, we get away from the tournament format, but... You know, has that it has that seemed to work out for some guys, or does it seem like all right, yeah, you're not you don't have to fight when there's a tournament, but you're still not getting as many fights as you'd like. I don't know, man. We're gonna. I mean, I don't have any fight news, man. It's been a while, you know. I, well, I to me, it's been a while. Like, I want to have some fight news, okay? So, especially coming off a win, trying to get my my name uh, kind of back on the map of things, uh, and, and and kind of really show people who who I really the fighter that caveman really is, you know, the the name I built on myself before. Um I don't know, man. It'd just be nicer to stay busy. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up that fight. Man, that that was just you know that was an exciting fight. And I almost feel like they gave you that fight because it was like in your hometown, but they put you on the prelims. And I mean, you know, sometimes that happens, you gotta work your way back up, but it's yeah. like, hey, you can sell tickets, but we don't trust you to sell viewership. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, they wouldn't be able to come to Kansas, uh, you know, especially 30 minutes where, from where I live without, you know, me being fighting on the card. And uh, I think that's one of the big things um, that they're, you know, I'll just say this. I know that they're coming back to the Kansas Star uh, late in uh, 2015. But you don't want to wait a year to fight. So. No! I don't want to wait a year to fight. <laughs> I'll fight every three months if I can. Uh. <laughs> Um, I mean, I know you were you were pushing like, hey, everyone, like this video, tell Bellator, get me another fight, you know, using your, your social media army to your advantage that way, but um, they haven't responded at all. They're just kind of like, hey, well, we'll call you when we call you. Yeah, um, that's the thing, too, man. Like, I think, uh, you know, um, I think Bjorn saw me when uh, he saw, you know, my potential and uh, what I was able to bring to the table. And I, I just don't think uh, Coker's been able to see that yet. But, uh, you know, that's the kind of – I'm looking to show those guys, uh, all the new guys that are in there. Um, and, you know, I got to do what I got to do to uh, become relevant again and, uh, and uh, get paydays, man, like get fights. So – uh, you know, whatever it takes, man, uh, I'm not worried about it. Uh, I've kind of find, found a, a, a passion again for fighting. Uh, not that it was really lost, but, man, I liked drinking beer and, and eating food a lot more than I liked training. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was a little more worried about having a good time than training really hard. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of back in the – you're really killing it, man. Like I I'm staying in shape. I hope that they call me. Uh, I I'm ready to fight basically whenever they call. Yeah, I guess that was the question. Was like, you know, you know, I know you like to eat and drink. So do I. Um, yes. And that, you know, team drinking. Team <laughs> drinking. I guess with the with the tournament format, you really just got to push hard for that first camp and then keep it going like every six weeks. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, That's what was awesome about the tournament. <laughs> yeah, but with with the you know, fights being more frequent this way, you know, yeah, are you keeping things t 
tight in between camps? Are you focusing more on just overall healthy lifestyle? I know Aubrey's probably up your ass left and right saying, hey, man, you want to support my gear, you better live the lifestyle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, man, like, Aubrey recommended all these books and stuff. So I've been, like, doing some reading and this and that, how to better my mind and all those things. And, uh, I don't, man, yeah, basically I'm just living a healthier life, uh, you know. So uh, staying in the gyms, uh, staying in the gyms easy for me. I love training. Um, but eating well and, like, not going out, not having a good time, that's hard. Hey man, we we work hard, we play hard, we want to have a good time, right? Right. So give me some. So give me some work. So I can <laughs> play again. Ziga, so I blasted some Alpha Brain and some Shroom Tech Immune right before we started this show. Hell so yeah. I'm on I'm on cloud nine right now. Except I wash it down with cow's milk because that's what I fucking drink. Because I'm a human being and a man. <laughs> I don't drink milk from anything that doesn't have any fucking nipples. Dude. So, well, thank you, Onnit, for recommending some almond milk or coconut milk. You can milk anything with nipples, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, they're like, on the package, it's like, try it with some almond milk or coconut milk. I'm like, no, that's not how this works, all right? <laughs> I'm not getting on no paleo bandwagon. I'm going to drink you milk. I'm going to eat milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, man, I, I have a weird, like, reaction to dairy. Well, that's one thing. So, yeah, man, like, it makes me all bloated and I fart, and then my girlfriend doesn't want to have sex with me. You didn't have milk today, right? No, baby, I'm straight. It's cool. I'm good. I'm good. It was all good. <laughs> it's like I did have some, ice, good. had some ice cream right before coming in here, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so, yeah, actually, that's like, the that's funny thing. I love ice cream, but I try to stay away from that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just god damn it. You can't have anything. You can't have beer, ice cream, ribs. You gotta just, fight. You gotta train. It's all, it's all taken away. You need a show you need a show bet. on like yeah, you need to show on like the food network or something where you you know, you just eat like barbecue ribs and shit and travel and fish and then then you know, see, see right now you can't do that stuff because of your job. So you need a job that like that's Allow your job. That for your thing. Here's my here's mine. All right. Food channel, hear me out. Food channel. Food fights, okay? It's where I go around and beat the shit out of people at other gyms. <laughs> and then I challenge them to a food contest afterwards. <laughs> you you know what? That's not a bad one to see if you could pitch to Spike, man. Be like, "Hey, I go and I, I train at all the different gyms that like your Bellator stars are at." Yep. You know, all the different camps. So it's sort of like a travel, like a fighting travel show. And then we go check out like a local food place and just like, you know, bro down. Exactly. That's it. That's the That's show. That's what I'm saying. Food fights. Boom. Copyrighted it. <laughs> you know, there you go. Boom. Like ca caveman, caveman's, caveman's food fights. That's right. <laughs> Dude, man. I don't. I don't know why they don't take some of the the better personalities of Bellator, like Joe Warren and myself, and and maybe a couple other guys that are possibly sort of funny, and uh, <laughs> and you know do something with us, man. Build us up, make us stars. I'm ready to be a star. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, going into your last. Yeah. I want Coker. To... <laughs> Coker, we're ready. You know what, Matt? Just. Get those guys you're buddies with, who you got good chemistry with, and do something yourself for free. Really, I'll fuck. We'll talk after this. I'll show you how to set that shit up, man, and just fucking build the army. Build the army from there, and then the then they'll come calling you. There you go. I like Re your idea. We'll we'll talk. Yeah, we'll go details later. We don't need to. <laughs> we don't need anyone steal <laughs> <to> our <laughs> So here's what we're gonna do. It's on the hush hush. All right, so here's what you're gonna you log into your email, and then you're gonna email me, and then we're gonna. <laughs> 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 uh, <Next>. I want... <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna text you later. <laughs> Next um, week, UFC is gonna come out with an identical fucking TV show. Oh my god, <laughs> it's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be called like Cowboys Fight Trip Rodeo or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> where he goes around to all the different gyms, and then... <laughs> that bastard. Yeah, easy day. Um, now, I wanted to touch on your last fight uh, real quick. Um, the one-sided whomping. <laughs> Put a pretty good beating on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> And the 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 showboating at one point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know I like to have fun while I'm in there. Uh, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean it's pretty. Uh, you know I like when I fight. It's I mean it's really an entertainment thing for me. Like I just. You know, I'm basically a professional wrestler that really likes to get into fist fights. So, uh, <laughs> I just need to come up with like more uh, WWE type moves where I like bounce off <laughs> and elbow the guy in the head. You know, but uh, Dude, come train with Josh Barnett, man. That'll hook you up. Where? Yeah, I let's go. I'm yeah, down. He's, uh, he's based out of L.A. full-time now, but he's, he's from up here in Washington, so he still comes up here a lot. Um, yeah, I got, I, I've got Monson's contact info, so they're like, you know, good old boys. And even though Monson's out in Florida, he's still out here all the time as well. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. We'll, we'll, we'll make that happen. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I don't... I, I'm weird. Like I, I want to train with everybody, man. Like I, I'm, I'm. That's what I want to do. If I've got some time off, I want to go places and train with people. And, uh, um, you know, I don't really give a shit who I train with as long as they've got something to show me. Well, yeah. I mean, um, you got uh, what's his name? Mighty Mouse's. Uh, I always forget his name. The AMC Pink Matt Hume. He's out here. Um, Eric Dahlberg, um, that's, uh, David Hayes, the Bellator head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's his guy. Uh, and, uh, Dennis Hallman, uh, he's just a little south of here. Uh, that's where, um. If I train with him, is he going to wear panties while we train? <laughs> I'll let, I'll let, I'll let you ask him bikini. To figure it out. <laughs> is he training in a bikini? <laughs> You ask him and figure it out. <laughs> um, yeah, he's out here. Uh, I mean, Misha Tate. If so, I would really love to train with him. Yeah, because you know he's like, you know, one of Misha Tate's main coaches, and she she's from here, but I think she's down in Vegas full time now. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know, this so it's a little bit of a a mini mecca out here. It's not quite San Diego, but you never know. Um, but yeah, Matt Van Buren, he's down there at Alliance. Um, you yeah. know. With all those big heavyweights and Dominic Cruz and those, and I think that's your boy Warren. And my arch nemesis. Oh, that's right. Oh, fuck. My arch nemesis, Michael oh, my Chandler. God. Oh my god. <laughs> that's the second time since I've known you, I've fucking done that. <laughs> the first time, Anton was like, "Hey, man, don't be fucking talking about guys someone's fought and lost you, man. That shit." Right. Don't you bring it up. Don't you dare. <laughs> That's what he said. He was like, "Dude, don't fucking do that." <laughs> and I'm like, "I bring that shit up with you all the fucking time. Are you kidding me?" <laughs> oh man, I don't give a shit, man. But uh, man, he's had a couple tough losses. Uh. Oh yeah. There you go. Hey. There's the re there's the rematch you need right there. Hey, I've I've got a good win. He's got a couple tough losses. You fought before, you know, maybe hometown. Uh, let's make it. A, let's do it. Yeah, that's what you do. Call, call up Bellator and be like, look, don't say that. Be like, what do I have to do to get a rematch with Chandler? And they'll say, well, you got to fight. And you go, okay, well, then give me a fight so we can make that happen. That's what I'm saying, man. That's, <laughs> that's, trick that's, right. that's right where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, not to play uh, armchair quarter, the one thing I noticed – on the Ramos fight was the thing you do every fight. You come out guns blazing that first minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just knew right there. <laughs> He's like, oh, I know. You know, you come out hard and heavy, and I know why you do it because you've got those wins. You know, like Jordan Smith, where you come out heavy and knock a guy out in a minute. You know, but man, who doesn't want to knock a guy out in a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Easy, especially when you're in a tournament, right? Yep. 
Uh, who else? Yeah, D Dylan Smith. You knocked him out first round. Um, you know, but yeah, it, the one thing I noticed is that, I mean, when you go deep with guys, um, really? it works your way. Yeah. It does. Like the only, <laughs> yeah, like, guys, guys don't like it when they have to go deep with caveman. You know, <laughs> caveman <laughs> doesn't like that. that but <laughs> the the deeper it goes, like it the harder that club goes deep on them. The deeper it goes, the harder that club gets, right? Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're no, only but seriously, man. Like, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Like, um, I just, I feel like I, I build with every round, every minute, yeah. and every second that goes by. You know, I'm usually building in in confidence and energy, and uh, you know, that that's kind of a, um, you know, you called it showboating earlier, and it kind of is, but. <laughs> It's really like, uh, you know, I use it uh, almost as a way to demoralize the yeah. Enemy, you know what I mean, I, like, um, you know, one thing, man, between the second, you can watch the fight in, uh, with uh, Ramos or uh, Hamos or whatever, uh, Davi Hamos uh, on this last fight. Um, uh, between the second and third, um, I raised my hands in between the round, and I, you know, I'm, and I'm just staring at him. I'm looking in his eyes. I've got my hands up in a victorious pose. And, you know, I could just tell – when you see a guy and you know he's beat, like that's the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah, I definitely in that third round, I mean, he was just on autopilot. I mean, that was really obvious. And I was just joking with the show, but I'm like it's one of those things like if you do it and you win, they say you're a genius. Yeah, yeah. And if you do it and you get – just fucked up. They're like, oh, what an idiot. What an idiot. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, I just look at it and go, that was, I, you know, I think neither idiot nor genius. I just think that was entertaining. Right? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, would you rather he didn't do that and then we wouldn't be talking about it? <laughs> That's so true, man. That's so true. Yeah, yeah but it's, I think, I mean, I know his... Chael Sonnen would have knocked out Anderson Silva with that crazy spinning back fist. <laughs> No one will be talking shit about it. That's right. Exactly. Like, oh, why did he do that for? I'm like, well, if it worked, you know, yeah. who knew? <laughs> he wouldn't be saying shit. What a genius. That guy was so yeah. good, man. He knew I mean, it was just like this. I mean, it, but it was almost like, you know, I mean, I'm sure they, they game plan like everyone else. And they're like, hey, man, he's going to come out hard and heavy that first minute, you know. But, like, and that was the most success he had, though, when he hit you there in the first yeah. part of the first round. But then you recovered. And boom. And you know, they were like, no, man, he's got two knockout losses. His chin can't take it. And I'm like, yeah, but that's the two hard-hitting motherfuckers. Like. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that's the thing, too, man, is like... Uh, but like I, when that didn't work, he had no backup plan, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really think it demoralized him. You know, I when I really think the fight changed is when he went to take me down... And I sprawled him out the next two times. Uh, he got me down the first time. Yeah. You know, the rest of the fight, I, I sprawled him out. And, uh, man, I think that just really, you know, once he knew he couldn't get on top of me anymore, I think he, you know, he felt defeated. Oh, yeah, that was one, too. It was like you had, I remember that. When he did get that one on you, like, I don't think he thought your defense off your back was going to be as good as it was. And then I think he thought when you were working in his guard and just landing ground and pound, I don't think he expected that much punishment like from that position that he thought maybe was a position he could still win the fight from. You yeah. Know? So yeah. he pretty much was like, Oh, you're gonna get hurt on the feet. All right, you wanna pull you wanna play off your guard. Okay, well that's not gonna work out too well for you either. And then like you said, by that third round, if a guy gets to you know, if he feels he can't be confident anywhere, you know, he's just gonna start trying to just Throw haymakers, that, I guess. And that's the thing too is at that point I felt confident anywhere the fight would go. So uh, yeah, because I mean there was like when you were working when he was on the you know on his back it was like I was like man he just must be real comfortable there because this guy's not trying to mount anything. You weren't afraid to like let him start setting things up so you could land a shot and be like nope don't do that again nope don't do that <laughs> again like yeah. that's what it felt like watching it like you know you're yeah, no. <laughs> When I was in there, and it, 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 like I said, especially once I knew I kind of had him, uh, you know, uh, most of his steam was gone, most of his, uh, uh, I don't know, offense, whatever. Uh, once I knew I kind of had him beat, I I just started to do whatever I wanted, really. And, uh, you know, at 
in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd have done more, like try to pass and finish him and maybe submit him, whatever. But, uh, you know, you said I felt comfortable, and I, that's really exactly what it was. Like, I felt extremely comfortable right where I was. And, uh, you know, I was just smashing him, man. Like, I was – I. You know, I was hitting him with some hard elbows, and, uh, you know, it just felt really good, and, uh, man, you know. <laughs> they don't feel good for him, right? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to eat any more of those elbows. That's what it was. Yeah. Well, like we said, yeah, it was a good it was a good fight to have back. I mean, undefeated, you know, young Brazilian prospect, um, you know, uh, I mean. You know, it, you know high-level black belt. Yeah, that was the big thing, too, like. You know, I don't think anyone thought you were going to be able to do what you did. Like, you know, because it's like you don't have to beat him at jujitsu. You just have to neutralize his jujitsu and then beat him. Yeah, you know, exactly. Strikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work to, uh, you know, I think one of the things that people don't understand is I have a very good defensive jujitsu game. Um, it's, I, man, I. I've never been submitted. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good call. Um, so, so what's up, Marcin? What's up, Marcin Held? <laughs> I will so, fuck you up. <laughs> you've got um, so you're you're training him. You're you're making sure you're staying in shape in between fights. You know, hoping to get another one before they come back to Kansas. Um, you know, what, what else has got you occupied right now? Like what other things are you, you know, besides family and drinking or trying to avoid drinking? Yeah. Drinking crystal meth. (laughs) Oh, good. Okay. Well, we're going to text text about that later too. Oh yeah. Oh, this is live. Oh shit. (laughs) Um, you know, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? How are you making bank? (laughs) I'm really enjoying being a dad. Just my daughter's birthday is uh, on the 26th coming up here, and uh, nice. birthday this you know she'll be turning three, and then my son's coming up turning 11 months old. So, and uh, you know he doesn't quite have a beard yet, but he's working on it. <laughs> we'll get him there. Do, do you have a you have a beard oil sponsor, don't you? Uh yeah, the Mod Cabin. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, let me throw that in there real quick. Yeah. <laughs> it's your show, man. You say whatever you want. Yeah, thanks for setting me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just like, you know, not a lot of guys have a beard oil sponsor, you know. Well, I keep not, shit, a lot of people have a badass beard. My shit tight, you know, but <laughs> when you get it bushy, you got to oil it. That's right. Like like wax in a car. Mm-hmm. It's maintenance. Beard maintenance is what I like to call it. All uh. right. Trademark. Just as a woman cares for her hair, a man who cares for his beard does the same. <laughs> Must care for his mane. Yes. <laughs> well, fucking lion. There you go. Um, fatherhood. This looks like he's been treating you pretty well then. Yeah. It's no, a good it's... reason not to go out and party, isn't it? Exactly, man. <laughs> like, that's that's the biggest thing, man, is like that's – I mean – I still like to get away every once in a while, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, man, for the most part, like, I have more fun staying home with my kids, you know, than getting out there and being crazy and this and that. And that's something that really changed when I, you know, uh, one, when you have one kid, you can kind of get away with some bullshit. But two, you become a full-time parent all the time. <laughs> So yeah, man, I've I've been doing that and it's been awesome, man. Like, uh, you know, staying home and I just got my daughter to play a little bit of video games the other day, which I was extremely proud of. Nice. Yeah. She didn't what, quite fully understand how to play, of course, but. Oh yeah, right. What do you What do you You're on Xbox, right? Yeah, I play the Xbox One. I went upstairs, right? I'm playing Xbox. I'm playing Halo. <laughs> and I go upstairs. I come downstairs. She was playing with her teapots or whatever, and. I come downstairs and she's got the controller and she's like running around trying to shoot people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what? You want people to know your handle? Right, I'll get that from you later. That's what, <laughs> everyone, you want everyone to blast you on Xbox? I don't care. Add do me. it. Do it. Mike Roch forty one thirty. Mike Roch. Yeah, say it out loud. Forty one thirty. I oh, know. I get it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all one word, M-I-K-E-R-O-T-C-H. R-O-C-H. R-O-C. All right. M-I-K-E-R-O-C-H-4130. Boom. We're gonna we're gonna get you so we're gonna get you five hundred noobs. Get you five hundred fucking Xbox Live friends. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All I have is Halo for mine because I got the Master Chief Collection bundle. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. yeah and I don't. I, the games are so fucking expensive that. Dude, uh, I know it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I do. One of my neighbors, though, he used to work for Xbox, though, so he's gonna hit up one of his buddies and try and hook me up with some discounted uh, merchandise. I don't know if I yeah, should be I'm telling people also, that. Also, have to message you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, he's like, what do you want? I'm like, I want Advanced Warfighter. I want Destiny. I want Rain. I want Unity. I Destiny. want. I want the fucking uh, Shadows of Mordor. <laughs> yep. Yep. All of the above. <laughs> I'll be good for the next year if I get those five games. <laughs> yep. All right. Is really good. You got to get that one. All right. Well, I tell you what. You got any last words before I let you go? I know you got a busy day ahead of you. The fatherhood and fishing. Yeah, all of the above. Um, last words. Caveman's fucking awesome. <laughs> I want to fight. Bellator, seriously, I want to yeah. fight. That's it. You need to be drinking that caveman coffee they sell. Uh, I you're do the drink fuck, well, You're the I, fucking caveman. You need to be walking around with that shit. Caveman coffee, and um, yeah, I've tried it. It's really, really good. Yeah. It's like, you, you need, they need to put your fucking image on that thing, because you're the caveman. Yeah. You're their fighter, right? Yeah, exactly. Don't I get some royalties from that somehow? <laughs> They're going to be like, actually, we've had Caveman Coffee longer than you, so you owe us money. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that to our attention, Dave. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make me by, my name. Yeah, by the way, you're dropped. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, hey, good okay. stuff, though. Yeah, check them out. The Caveman316 on Twitter, Facebook, David Caveman Rickles. Uh, hit up Bellator if you want to see him fight again. Yes, tweet Bellator. Yeah, Tell this is that the greatest fighter ever known to man is David the Caveman Rickles, and you want to see him fight. This will be up on um, YouTube as soon as we end the broadcast, and I will put it up later tonight on iTunes, uh, the Fuller Fight Factor Live. Uh, you'll see it right there, episode 21. You can download it on your iPhone, um, you know, or you can stream it on Blog Talk Radio. But either way. This was fun. I like these. I like these video editions. It's a lot easier to let the conversation flow. And but. also on Pornhub, you can download the X-rated version of our interview uh, <laughs> for ninety-nine cents. That's, but except one person's gonna download it, then put it on um, PornTube for free. <laughs> for free, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's how it works. So, <laughs> so really, uh, you know, we don't really need you to pay to see us. It's just uh, we, one just, person. we just need one person to buy it. One person to do it, and then you can see us naked all you want. <laughs> <laughs> the, the camera actually goes below here, and no one's wearing yeah. pants. Yeah, you guys don't but even know. We're this is the YouTube edited version stops here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm Justin Fuller. Uh, this has been Dave Rickles. Don't log out yet, because... Hang on. So you just oh. stay right there. I'll stay here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and again, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll, uh, you can find us on the MMACorner.com, uh, your home for all things MMA. And keep living the corner lifestyle.